Hey everyone, welcome back to Opining on Olam Haba. Uh, sorry for uh, uh, doing it Thursday today. Sometimes it happens Wednesday or Thursday, depending on the uh, on the schedule. Um, we're moving on. We're in again chapter ten um, of the Rambam, the Mishnai Parish Mishnai in Parakhelak in Sanhedrin, um, and we're in stanza seven, where he's now going to talk about you know what. You know how they all, you have all these different, like, you know, the five different types of people look at Olam Haba in a different kind of way, whether it's totally physical or it's in, uh, you know, or it's a, a mix of spiritual, physical, or it's something, you know, it's Mashiach, it's Tchiesa Mesim, it's a Mishkabavel of all of these things. It's in this world, you know, that's where you get the good. It's a whole mix. mix. And he's like, no one really knows, as you'll see in a moment. And... Uh, you know, people ask, interestingly, they end up like you're sort of like more focused on the esoteric, you know, mystical, like, hey, what's it going to look like? What's going to happen when this happens? And check this out. We'll see it in the Rambam as he moves forward. Avazua nekuda hani fleis, rotz alomar ha'olam haba. He said this wondrous thing, olam haba, me'atim tzab b'shum panim shiyala alibo. He said, basically, he's like, no one really knows any of this stuff. No one can actually say this is exactly what it is. Um, and this is, ex- I know exactly kind of what the means to the ends are. No one really knows what the difference is between the ends and the means and the means and the ends. No one can really put their finger on it uh, and know it know it for sure. Aval mashishualim. And it, right, so he's like, People generally do that. They don't really, they don't want to know what it fully is. It's like, no, this is like cool and mystical and, you know, and you're kind of like, wow, you know, it's this or that. And that's what he says here. And it is very almost childlike um, because if you've had, you know, if you have children and grandchildren that have asked you these kinds of questions or when you're a kid, you're asking these kinds of questions like, what did, what's going to happen during the resurrection of the dead? I get this all the time from my kids or from... Or from uh, kids in uh, in in you know various classes I teach or whatever. He's everyone asks this. You know the, the the every the regular you know people the mevinim the intelligentsia. Well, what's gonna be when during the resurrection? How's it gonna work? Are they gonna come up naked? Olavoshim? Are they gonna be dressed? Vim yamdu ba otan tachrichin atzman, and uh, you know when when they when they come up when they're resurrected, like how's that gonna work? Are they gonna be standing up in their burial shrouds, wearing the tachrichin that they're buried in? Atzman shenikbru behem berikmatam ubetziuram via via foy tifiratam. Oh, b'malbushi chasa gufam bilvad, or you know, or no, they'll be wearing tachrichin, or maybe they'll be wearing like beautiful garments, or maybe they'll be wearing just like some sort of uh, cloak that um, that just covers their bodies. Like you know, are they wearing loincloths? Like. What are they going to look like when they're when resurrection of the dead happens? Uchshiavu Mashiach, and when the Mashiach comes, imi yusham ha'ashir ve'hadal. Is there going to be wealth? Is it, people are going to be rich and poor? Oi imi yubiyam of chazak ve'chalash. Will there be weak people? Will there be strong people? There be shelos ka'elu b'chol eis. And it's like you know, everyone just wants to know what what's is it going to be like this? Is it going to be like this? Right? That's. That's Olam Haba questions. Are, those are messianic musings as well. Right? Mashiach questions. He said, if you're, you have the privilege of, he doesn't say the privilege, but if you're, here you are, you're reading and you're um, delving into this book, this work, this essay that I've written, I want you to understand this. He's like, I want you to pay attention to this parable that I'm going to draw out for you, that I'm going to uh, illustrate for you. And then you could prepare your heart and listen to my words about all of this. We are continu- That was stanza seven. We're continuing with uh, stanza eight. Sim b'da'atcha. He says, think about this. Kinar katan have you, Eitzel Melamed, you have a, a young child and he's ready to go to school, right? school age, elementary school child. So they bring him to a teacher, Lulam do Torah, to teach him Torah or her. 
וזהו הטוב הגדול לו. And this is like, wow, he's learning Torah, she's learning Torah, it's amazing. לעניין מה שישיג מן השלמות, אלא שהוא למאות, למאות שנה וחולש את שכלו, אינו מבין מה עלה אותו הטוב. Like, you know, if he or she had his head on as a mature adult, they would know, wow, you're going to learn Torah. You're going to learn how to achieve perfection and fulfillment in this world and values and ideals and ideas that are timeless and eternal. But he's a kid or she's a kid. They don't, they don't, they're not thinking about, you know, those kinds of things. I can't contemplate that. So, you know, very young and, you know, their mind isn't, is not fully developed yet. So, I don't know how great, what good that really is. And not what could actually, you know, the, the great, you know, the, the great uh, comprehension and the great, you know, levels of understanding uh, that would come to them through this shlemut, through learning. So, therefore, how do you motivate them? So then uh, you're compelled against your will. Right? The teacher, who's much more uh, developed, uh, sophisticated than this kid, she is arezoto al halimud bidvarim shemahu vimetzlo. He's going to use positive reinforcement to motivate this child, uh, you know, to learn, you know, and get them, what, find out what their currency is, Right? Oh, you should, you know, read this pasuk and I'll get you, I'll give you candies. I'll give you nuts. Oteinim or figs, right? I'll give you candy. I'll give you treats. And I'll give you a little bit of honey, right? And through that, this, this child is going to learn, is going to read, is going to, you know, be amazing. Why? Because they want to get the treat at the end. Lola etzema kriya, not because they care about the subject matter. Visheino yadem alata, because the child doesn't understand, you know, the sophistication and the 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 greatness of this Torah that they're learning. El kadeshe yidnu lo otom achal vachilat otana megadim etzlo yakar beinav mina kriya. But you're only you're only doing it for the reward, right? For that the treats for the candies. And those candies are, are so much more precious to the child than the Kriya, than the, you know, whatever it is, you know, he or she is learning. The Tov Harbe below Safik. And it's like a million times better. And... The child like see wow you know they see it as like a chore this is hard I have to work I have to toil at this this is not easy I'm not you know because they're not so motivated for the the content itself right it's not the the ends in and of itself it becomes the means to the ends what's the the means is I'm gonna study I'm gonna learn I'm gonna break my head and I'm gonna make sure that I understand so the teacher you know is proud of me and the teacher rewards me and gives me that piece of that piece of honey, that candy, or gives me uh, that, uh, you know, that it goes, that nut. That's it. That's what it's all about. And, you know, very often I talk to uh, parents and, you know, who are having trouble, like, motivating their kids. You know, oh, he doesn't want to come to Davin with me. He doesn't want to come to the Sunday morning minion. She doesn't want to come, you know, with me and uh, to do this. or to... So I, I, I look at them straight up. And they say, well, I don't want to bribe them, and I don't want to, I want to make them love it. And I say, think about this. The child is, I don't know, eight years old, or even the kid is 12 years old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old. I ask them, what's their currency? So literally, I say exactly, it's based off of the Rambam. I say to them, what's their currency? I don't want to bribe them. No, 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 what's their currency? Well, uh, he, he loves uh, dinosaurs, you know, she loves uh, whatever. You know, whatever it is, uh, you know, that's exciting for her. She loves Harry Potter. Okay, good. So you'll say, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. And when you're done, I'm going to give you, uh, you know, the, the dinosaur. When in six months from now, you're going to get... I remember I, I, I once bribed Ella 
to read, it's not for religious purpose, but it was, it was part of it, uh, to read uh, the Harry Potter books. And I said, if you read the first Harry Potter, and she was very young at the time, she, but she loved reading, I said, you're going to love it. It's great. And we could talk about it. And I said, I'm, I'm going to take you to Harry Potter world, Wizarding World in, in Universal Studios. Just me and her. Just me and you. And we did. We had an, an incredible experience, unforgettable experience. But the, the point is, with anything, even with a 16-year-old kid, you want him, him or her to go to Teen Minion or to go to, to this, put it on their film. What's their currency? Oh, they want a car? Oh, they're getting licensed? They want a car? Okay, good. If it's in the budget, right, figure it out. Okay, good. You do this. Give me two months of this. You're going to get a car. Give me this. Give Whatever the case may be, it's not bribing. They say, oh, it's bribing. No, it's their currency. It's that sweetens the pot for them. That's that's okay. That's they can't understand how important it is. What we feel when we come to shul every Shabbos when this stupid pandemic is over and we could come back to coming to shul. They don't understand what we're missing. Now they probably do because they're all missing it, right? But but you know they couldn't possibly fully understand it. Oh, it's so important putting it to fill in every day. Okay, it's important to say bracha. It's important to daven. Okay, if you say so, Dad, if you say so, teacher, if you say so, well, what's going to build it? Find their currency. Motivate them in whatever way works for them, and you'll see it'll be a good thing. And from here, we're going to stop here. Uh, the Rambam continues, and he talks about what I was just saying, how the currencies change all the time, the older you get. And it's really ain't the davar sof. It never ends. And as you'll see, he's going to build off from this the parable of why we serve God. What are we serving God for? What's our currency in this world? What's the real currency of the next world? And that's where we're going to stop for today and wish everyone a wonderful evening. See you next time.